right. Next, <laughs> first up in It's Barely News is going to be, uh, we want to tell you about the Broken Molds documentary, which was kind of interesting. We got sent a uh, an email that explained that Broken Molds is a documentary about windsurfing, mm -hmm. um, but it was shot by drone. A lot of it was shot by drone, and they actually won three film awards for this uh, for their drone filming and uh, overall movie. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, we yeah. wanted to at least tell you that, that uh, if you wanted to see a a documentary about windsurfing and the history of windsurfing and yeah, shot by drone then you could check out broken molds yeah very exciting yeah when i first heard about it i was like okay what's this got to do with fpv why is this a new submission but the the uh the fellow who submitted it was like no 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 like the whole thing was shot by drone and it's got a ton of great like drone and fpv footage so see look you see that helicopter we don't have to do that anymore now we have drones, and it's a big deal. Um, so check that out. That's on Amazon Prime, and it's linked in the video description below. Yeah. Next up, we've got a thing I'm pretty skeptical of. So you can tell me what you think. Uh, this I'm is supposed also to be... skeptical. I don't know what so it is. These, uh, so this is called PATS, PATS. Uh, and basically, this system... So currently, they have a bunch of... Uh, infrared radar or infrared infrared uh camera setup and they're using infrared cameras to identify bugs inside of uh inside of these facilities uh you know any kind of grow facilities of any kind um agricultural stuff so they're detecting bugs and they're using that data to know like what pests are around and how they need to treat and what's good and bad right but they've decided that they're going to add this thing called pats x and pats x is a drone a little tiny whoop, as you can see in the picture. Um, this tiny whoop will go out based on the infrared cameras and fly into bugs that they want to get rid of, and then the propellers will cut the bugs up, and then they'll return back. Okay. That sounds fine. You're going to just fly around and chop up the bugs. Fly around and chop up the bugs. That's the plan. Okay. Well... I just, I just don't think, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see how the testing goes, but boy, that seems like it's not going to work very well. But we'll find out. It's going to chase down the bug. You think? I think a bug could dodge a drone pretty easily. Like I've tried yeah. to swat a fly. Right? It's hard. Yeah. They're fast. Yeah. So the idea that this little, I mean, but hey, you know, demonstrate that it works. I guess. Yes, it's worth testing. I think I, I, I would agree with that. But it, it will be interesting to see if this actually goes anywhere. So. All right. Um, we've got uh, a story from Malaysia next. Malaysia uh, Drone League has held their first GQ, and we wanted to give them a shout out um, and let you know that a nine-year-old local uh, who showed up for the event uh, took the top spot in their global qualifier. They ran the global qualifier. Uh, a nine-year-old took their top spot and got 49th overall in the GQ. I checked earlier today. He's wow. 49th on the overall GQ leaderboard. Oh, and only nine years old, the youngest racer they've ever had there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to give them a shout-out for getting a uh, – it's not easy to get a whole thing together and get all kinds of people there to show up. They had 41 pilots showed up um, and all putting in GQ time. So pretty cool stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's always so cool to learn about the FPV scene in uh, other countries. And I yeah, was scrolling and... through, I was scrolling through this page, not realizing I hadn't switched the scene. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to show these pictures that, so people can appreciate them. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so here we've got all the pilots. Here is the nine-year-old, presumably. Yeah, Pepper FPV we're... there on the right. Yeah. And uh, it just looks like a really cool scene. So congratulations yeah. to the folks uh, over there for getting a, getting a drone racing community uh, together. Um, yeah, and, other, and another foreign FPV pilot news. Uh, we've got this other kind of cool thing. So CNA Insiders, a YouTube channel um, that goes through and you know does these different uh, documentaries where they go and kind of figure out what people do in different hobbies and things. And today uh, they went and figured out what drone racing was about in Singapore. So this goes through and talks to some of the local FPV drone pilots, and they take her through flights huh, on the goggles. HC zero. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. This seems much more like in tune with what's actually happening. This is a pretty modern video. Yeah. You know, and everybody seems to know what's going on. So I thought Very this was really cool, cool to highlight. And, uh, 
yeah, it's a great look for people who don't know what it's about, uh, what it's about. I want to see this section. I try to fly a racing drone. This is going to be a disaster, but it'll be a beautiful, fun disaster. Oh, is she flying it? Oh, she crashed. Probably in angle mode, I would guess, right? Eh, not bad. Oh, that's about right. <laughs> it looks really fun and wholesome. That's yeah. great. I'm going to go back and watch this video. That looks, that looks, I always like to see how FPV is represented in uh, media. All right. All right. Next up, uh, another use for drones lately has been degradation detection. So we talked about drone inspections before. Um, obviously, drone inspections are happening all over the place for bridges and uh, buildings and all kinds of things. Uh, but this uh, process here uses photogrammetry, uh, machine learning, and different programs to take uh, historic data and 3D modeling that they have and use the drone to map out changes in the uh, in the structure over time, essentially. So they've taken a drone, they've gotten the same shots that they got the last time, and they were able to overlay the old image on the new image with this tech and figure out where the cracks, stresses, and changes are in, in, the, uh, oh, in the thing. So it basically makes it so that... It's not just a uh, a visual look. It's not just some guy right. looking at the footage to see what's different, or maybe look for cracks or something. It's a this AI is actually just telling you what's different. It's pretty neat. That's a really cool use for photogrammetry, because it, the photogrammetry lets it overlay the the flight paths and sort of see which part of the uh, bridge is the same as it was, um, and yeah. which part is different. That's really cool. That's really cool. Very cool. Very cool tech. So, uh, yeah, I just going to get better at that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, more drones and insects. Why are we spreading yeah. mosquitoes? Shouldn't we be so, getting rid of mosquitoes? So people might know that uh, there's issues with malaria uh, in mosquitoes. So yeah. one way you can get rid of malaria in mosquitoes is to release male sterile mosquitoes. Um, basically, they, they're not sterile, but they can in, they can make a female sterile. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, so like so they they're sterilized so that they can breed with a female, and that female cannot produce babies from that um, anymore. So we've got we've got like cuck mosquitoes that go out and find females and mate with them, and then the female is sterilized. Yes. So no more mosquitoes from that female. Uh huh. I can't see any way that conspiracy theorists won't will, will find a way to turn this into something sinister. <laughs> I can't yeah. imagine anyone having a problem with this. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. So basically they were having trouble spreading these things and the drones allow them to do it easier. The, the 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 weaponized male sterilizing mosquitoes were like, nah, we don't really want to go do this. And they were like, get in this drone. We're going to throw you over there at the females. Oh, my goodness. OK, cool. OK, let's uh, let's continue. That's why this is it's barely news. <laughs> All right. Ne next up. Uh, this is a neat project. Uh this guy's been producing uh, neurotechnology, uh, so basically, you know, trying to use the mind and different functions of the body to control things. So you don't, you know, if you're limited in movement or you just want to control with with limited movement, um, you can. And something he's produced is essentially a system that that uh, you slap this thing on your head, and then it uses these muscle groups that you can learn to train. And you can use it as a joystick. Um, so what he's done uh, in this example, uh, if you skip through a little farther, you'll see a guy come out on stage. Um, and this guy who comes out on stage essentially has his single joystick that he always uses for control. Um, and they've been able to map it together with the second joystick that's working off his muscle groups. Um, and he can actually fly a drone uh, <gasps> with, with dual joystick um, with this new system. With his brain and wow. his, uh, single joystick that he had. I uh, I was as you were starting the story, Blunty. 
I was about I was like queuing up jokes about lazy gamers not being willing to move their hands. That oh now it's not enough to sit in a chair and hold a joystick. Now you don't even want to hold the joystick. And then uh, this guy came out and I was like oh disabled people oh oh oh. Uh. So I'm uh, I'm really batting a thousand tonight. Yes, <laughs> that's really that's really cool. Yeah, this is really neat technology. Um... And basically the way they've done this is just through a phone app. So it's, you know, there's no modification needed to the drone. Their control is all, you know, coming through automatically. So yeah, super neat stuff. Um, Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it, I'll just say it even looks like they mounted a CADEX Vista on the back of that thing so that they could show the video on the screen differently. But nice. You got some kind of thing hanging off there. But anyway, pretty neat stuff and uh, shows what we be able to do with our uh, brains and muscles in the future. Um, now we got a story about anti-drone ammo. Yeah, so if you oh. haven't seen this, this is kind of an older video, but it came up in a newer interview, so people brought it up. But essentially, this uh, ammo is, uh, if you've ever had like a fan pull chain, uh -huh. this ammo is essentially a bunch of little balls attached to fan pull chain. Oh, yeah. So, so you shoot this out, and then it, it does penetration with the little metal balls, and the fan pull chain wraps all up in the propellers and slings all around the place and essentially can bring drones down with uh, ammo. Why is this better than just using birdshot? Uh, because you, because with birdshot, you have to hit something critical, I would say. Like, I mean, it depends on range, right, and your application. They, they were but, firing but it from a paintball gun, right? That's something. Yes, Yes, yeah, the, this is built so that, yeah, this is built so you can fire it rapidly from uh, something like a paintball gun. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Just not needing a shotgun would be a plus for some people. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. I'd be interested to try it. Yeah, rotor ride episode. But now, yeah, but now oh, that's yeah, good. That, that, that would be a cool rotor ride episode. Actually, that would be a cool rotor ride episode. I'm gonna just um, copy paste that over real quick. While you do the next story. All right. Uh, next up, we've got the world record drone light show for 4th of July. Uh, the Guinness world record has been broken. Uh, and you've got the wrong story. I tried to let Damn you. Damn it, I was so close. <laughs> we made it almost all the I way. I almost finished the episode. Flip. Because I was distracted. Um, there you go. How about this yeah, one? Yeah, we... We got the Guinness World Record for the most drones in a light show. And I think last year this was broken. Um, and, it, well, yeah, it was broken again this year um, by Sky Elements. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff. That's a lot of drones. A lot of management. Yeah. There's, there's, they're doing crazy shit with drone light shows. Like, did you see this? Like, the, the number of drones going up is – and their maneuverability and the shit they're animating – is blowing my mind. Yeah, when you start getting a thousand pixels, right? Like, you, you can make a lot of cool stuff, you know? Like, it's a 3D. It's not just, like, 2D animation anymore. It's like a 3D waving flag. There's that Chinese dragon. Oh, my goodness. They're doing insane stuff. It's just insane. And now we got a drone flying through the drones. Crazy. Very cool. cool stuff. Um, all right. All right. Uh, uh, next up, police in Santa Monica have been uh, responding to calls with a drone uh, to pre-scope out the situation. Um, and I think this is pretty cool uh, based on the scenarios that they've described anyway. We'll see how it actually goes. But you might find out when you call 911 that a drone shows up before the cops do if you're in Santa Monica. Um, and they're using it to scope out and find out what's happening on the scene. Um, mm -hmm. They represent, in here they mentioned that um, in Santa Monica, the drone camera was the only witness to a brutal robbery. Uh, one or two su suspects was apprehended because of that. And then on at least three occasions, it provided responding officers with critical, otherwise unobtainable information. Things people were holding were not guns. So they were basically radioed ahead to the police and saying, hey, these three people are standing here, and each of them looks like they have a gun, but none of them are guns. We can see that from the drone, you know, that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So that's super valuable information that, you know, you couldn't get otherwise. Um, and it's pretty neat that we've got uh, this kind of thing going on. Some that people is kind of sure are uh, like nanny yeah. state and all those kind of things, but it, I think it, it's neat for at least the applications they're presenting. Yeah, I mean the ability to 
uh, I think a, 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 there are many reasons why sometimes police encounters end the wrong way. And yes. one reason why that happened, and there, we're not going to try to go into all of them because this is not that podcast. But one reason is that police, you know, don't have the information they need to make the best possible decision uh, about what to do. And having, you know, a drone arrive overhead and look at the scenario and give more information but has the potential also, to uh, also, make things yeah. better. And also it's someone sitting at a desk remotely who's separated from the situation and isn't right. kind of getting there. And like, there's right. a lot of layers to it. And yeah, it feels good to, to have that extra eye on the situation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, in the absence of the other cultural factors that sometimes result in things going badly. I mean, uh, the worst case, if you want to say it, there's a camera now watching the police do the thing they do and from a third location. You know what I mean? I so, hadn't even got there yet. That's a great, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, last up, last, but yeah, last but not least, we're going to talk about New York who's been using drones to spot sharks near their beaches, um, and try to save swimmers from, uh, possibly getting bit by sharks. Great. Yeah. Fly a drone yeah. out there and see some sharks. Send the police, um, <laughs> send the police to arrest the sharks. This is a problem that solves itself. <laughs> 